today we're going to talk about the volume and surface area of composite shapes. Composite shapes are just when you take two or more shapes and combine them, and then we're going to find their surface area altogether or their volume altogether. So we're going to start with this one, the cone and the cylinder. So the surface area of a cone, I'm going to write down cone plus cylinder. So the surface area of a cone is pi r l plus pi r squared. The surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. Now let's examine our shape for a minute. To say we're going to find the surface area means we're going to paint the outside, all the exposed um, surfaces. So in a cone, is this base, this circle, exposed? Is it going to get painted? Well, no. So we're going to cross that out. We're only going to find the lateral area of the cone. For the cylinder, we've got two bases. Are both bases exposed to where they're going to be painted? No, just one of them is. So we're only going to find the area of one base when we put these together. So we take a look at our cone. The radius is 5. The slant height, remember that's the, the slanty height, not the up vertical perpendicular height, is 13. So that's pi radius slant height. For my cylinder, my radius is still 5, and the height of my cylinder is 2. So we're going to plug those in. 2 pi radius height plus pi radius squared. Now I just plug these into my calculator. We're not going to plug pi into the calculator because we're going to leave our answers exact. So this is 65 pi for my cone. And for my cylinder, 2 times 5 times 2 is 20 pi. And pi times 5 squared is 25 pi. So we put all that together and we get 110 pi square centimeters for the surface area of this shape. So when you think surface area, just remember I'm going to paint the outside of my shape. Now let's go to volume. The volume of a cone is one-third bh, that's for the cone, and the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. By the way, I'm using my formula chart because all these formulas are right here and you have access to those. So for a cone, the base is pi r squared because it's a circle. So we've already identified the radius of the cone is 5. I don't think we've identified the height of the cone yet. So here's the height of the cone. Remember the slant height is the hypotenuse and the, we have the radius. So I'm just going to do a little Pythagorean theorem to find the height of my cone. So grab your calculator. Some of you may already recognize the Pythagorean triple. And the height is 12. So for my cone, the radius was 5. The height was 12. For my cylinder, we have the same radius of 5 and a height of 2. So let's plug our numbers in. 1 third pi radius squared h plus pi radius squared h. And now, just as before, we put it into our calculator. So you can do your 1 third either as 1 divided by 3, or if you really like the fraction button, alpha y equals, you can do your 1 third times 5 squared times 12. Notice I didn't put pi in because we're going to leave it exact. 100 pi. And over here I've got 5 squared times 2, which is 50 pi. So all together my volume is 150 pi cubic centimeters. So the only thing tricky about the volume was that you had to find the height because I gave you the slant height. Alright, let's do the next one. 
This one says find the surface area. So you have to remember with a shape like this, we only want the parts that would be painted if I just poured paint on the outside. So we've got a pyramid sitting on top of a rectangular prism, and there's a piece right there that is not going to get painted. So we have to make sure we account for that. So I'm going to do my pyramid plus my prism, and then I'm going to subtract that square that didn't get painted, that part that's covered. So let's take a look. The surface area of a pyramid is one half PL plus B. I can tell right now that base of the pyramid is not included, so we're just not even going to talk about that. For my prism, the surface area is pH plus 2B. And we'll decide what our base is and work from there. And then we're going to subtract this square piece right here that is not going to receive any paint because this formula for the prism includes the entire top, bottom, and all the sides. So we'll calculate whatever this measurement is. I think we know this is 5 and it's probably a square pyramid. So I'm going to subtract 25 from that part that doesn't get covered. All right, let's talk about the pyramid. What is the perimeter of the base? I'll make a list over here. Pyramid. What is the perimeter of the base? It's a square pyramid, 5 by 5. So that perimeter is 20. What is the slant height of the pyramid? I've got that labeled for you. That's a 5. So pyramid's done. 1 half, 20 times 5. Now for our prism, we've got to choose a base. It really doesn't matter what you choose for your base. I think I'm going to choose this one for my base. You could have picked the front or and back. You could have picked the top and bottom. We would all get the same answer. So for my prism, the perimeter of my base is this 5 by 5 square. Oh, it's not a 5 by 5 square. It's a 5 by 4 square. So the perimeter of my prism would be 18. The perimeter of my base, sorry. The area of my base would be 20. And the height of my prism is the distance between the bases, which is 12. And now we can do the prism. Perimeter, 18. Height, 12. Plus two bases. And then we're going to subtract the base of the pyramid right here because that's not part of the surface that's going to get covered with paint. And now we just calculate. Half of 20 times 5 should be 50. 18 times 12. 216, 2 times 20, minus 25. So I'll just throw all that in the calculator. 50 plus 216 plus 40 minus 25 gives me 281 uh, square feet because it's area. You could have chosen the bases of the prism differently and you may have done your, your setup a little bit differently, but all in all, this base of the pyramid covers up part of the prism so that that's not part of the surface anymore, and that had to be um, taken out somewhere in your work. All right. Now, the question here on number three is find the length of the diagonal. So picture we are trying to, I don't know, we're going to send a stick to a friend. And we want to find the smallest box possible that will hold that stick. Well, that's the, the way we would load it in there, from the back corner at the top to the front corner at the bottom. So it's the diagonal of the prism. There's two ways to calculate this. I'm going to show you both of them, and then you can choose which one you think is easiest from there on. So one way <coughs> is I'm going to find a way to make that orange line the hypotenuse of a right triangle. 
one of the legs of the right triangle is the height, which is 4, and the other leg is this diagonal of the base. So I'm going to find, let's call this B, just to give it a name. I'm going to find B by using my 18 and my 6 to do that right triangle. So B is going to be the hypotenuse of the triangle that has legs of 18 and 6. So we're going to go 18 squared plus 6 squared is the square root of 360. We're not going to calculate that just yet, but that's going to be this B value. And now we're going to do the Pythagorean theorem again because the diagonal line is my hypotenuse. So I'm going to say C squared equals this B value to the second power plus 4 squared. Well, let's see. The square root of 360 squared, I, you shouldn't need a calculator, that's just 360. 4 squared is 16. So C is going to equal the square root of 376, which we could simplify in simplest radical form, or we're going to say it's approximately 19.391. So we found that by doing the Pythagorean theorem twice, once to get the diagonal of the base, and then the second time to get the diagonal of the prism. Now, we're going to like method Try this. What if I did the square root of 4 squared plus 18 squared plus 6 squared? It's kind of a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. Try that and see what you get. 4 squared plus 18 squared plus 6 squared. That's the square root of 376, which was 19.391. So you have options here. You can do your Pythagorean theorem twice to get this triangle, or just think of it as a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem and you do all three dimensions, a squared plus b squared plus the height squared to get that diagonal across the entire prism. Now you're going to do some practice of composite shapes and then sh demonstrate your knowledge on the check.